നമസ്കാരം എവറി വൺ ആൻഡ് വെൽക്കം ബാക്ക് ടു ദ പോഡ്കാസ്റ്റ് വി ഹാവ് ഡിയർ ഹട്ടയോഗ ടീച്ചർ യുഗദേ വണ്ണ വിത്ത് അസ് നമസ്കാരം വണ്ണ നമസ്കാരം ആ സോ ബിഫോർ വി ഗോ ഇൻ ടു ദ പോഡ്കാസ്റ്റ് ഐ വുഡ് ലൈക്ക് ടു ടെൽ എവറി വൺ ദാറ്റ് ദ ഓഡിയോ വേർഷൻ ഓഫ് ദിസ് ഇസ് അവൈലബിൾ ഓൺ ആപ്പിൾ പോഡ്കാസ്റ്റ് സ്പോട്ടിഫൈ ആൻഡ് ഓൾ ദി അതർ മേജർ പോഡ്കാസ്റ്റ് പ്ലാറ്റ്ഫോംസ് and as of now you have already seen yugadev anna giving us <laughs> tour guide to chidambaram <laughs> and deja with an old princess exactly so when we do we have a guided tour anna <laughs> so it's so, one so, so, we can so, make it happen so with your permission anna we can go into the podcast yes sir yes sir so, my pleasure mm. so we would like to know more about you anna like where ever you would like to start from your childhood where you're from what okay. you used to do and you know before we go into the yoga <laughs> okay <laughs> so i am from kadalur actually anna like kadalur is near to pondicherry so kadalur uh, as the name suggests kadal means it's near beach okay. i just got a natural harbor so like you know my uh, family and everyone is into marine family and i was born and brought up uh, with two siblings and i'm more kind of a techy guy actually like technique means like techy means like into science and you know uh, analytical way of thinking <laughs> all this thing right from my childhood i used to always I go with this motor uh, no light bulb all this thing oh. that is how i was born and uh, I was a very logical guy <laughs> 11th 12th and uh, during the 11th standard i had this opportunity of meeting uh, abdul kalam sir oh, actually okay. in his during his presidentship and um, it was like it was a collective event not like uh, it was a co- the, the competition name is called young scientist competition and there are many others like me who attended it and uh, he inspired me like to get into aeronautical engineering and uh, aeronautical engineering was very wonderful uh, uh, transition in my life and you know i was a good student in that uh, <laughs> course of my life as well mm. and parallelly i was into yoga uh, like our uh, family i uh, know uh, uh, in our family yoga has been a uh, part of our life so i was parallelly into competitions of yoga like state championship <laughs> no, so what, all this what was that yoga like like it was like more kind of gymnastics Gymnastic. kind of yoga okay. like you know we'll make a bet like you know like uh, with, within 3 days i'll make this asana okay. like that we'll do that and i'll do that it was like uh, since i was a very young age as, as well like my body was able to do it but that is not the right way to approach that uh, later in my life only i realized and sadhguru telling it in what are the things it can cause and i have seen it as well in me <laughs> what it has caused and all but do, during those days it was like more kind of physical like uh, gymnastics kind of yoga i would say all the <laughs> all the yoga the, what we are not supposed to teach i was doing that time and i was into those kinds of life and yoga was not happening only gymnastics was happening and during my college first year uh, this championships and all was happening uh, i got into few championships and got uh, gold medals as well okay <laughs> in state uh, championships and all but later on in my fourth year of my college um, some uh, drastic change in my life happened of course something related to emotional state of our human being of course happens to everyone so it happened to me and i was looking for uh, uh, like a you know, way out of it completely right. so i was searching for it and uh, i couldn't find like i was uh, as i said no i was very logical kind of person so no one can easily <laughs> influence me so i wanted to come out of that state so that was the thing that i could uh, i i took a vow like no i have to walk out of it so parallelly uh, i found inner engineering and then i did inner engineering 2012 and within two in seven months of time i did the higher programs called silence it's called samima i read uh, when i attended the higher programs and all i could see that you know the what i was looking for it started happening in me right. and uh, it was wonderful to uh, to look at that and uh, 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 you know uh, and after that i had the emotional state that i wanted to come out it also vanished right. and then it set a new course of life in me like you no know, how much thing how much perspective can be changed how much uh ways of looking at life can be changed just doing this uh, few uh, minutes of practices and not like you know rigorous twisting and standing on head and all this <laughs> funny uh, yoga that's been around mm, then i found that uh, this is the thing like i, could, I was ha- having i was having it as a parallel in my life i was into it com- uh, i was into a, an it company i was working there for 10 months time and i could see that uh, after doing this higher programs i and i could see what are the people were going through it was like they are having two faces somewhere they are having something inside and something outside they are portraying something 
I would say it is not uh, relevant. Like, you know, inside office they are some, uh, they are having a different phase, and outside they are having a different phase. And uh, I could not gel with that way of life uh, as it go as it went by. Uh, and after that, I came out, and I I was I started my own company of doing interior designing. Actually, oh, okay. like <laughs> it was okay, okay, okay. <laughs> because I was doing all the things on my own. I used to get the raw materials. I used to do the planning. I used to it was, oh. like, it was like one man show. Okay. So few contracts came, few contracts were down, and everything was. It was a good experience actually. Till now, I have this contacts coming okay. <laughs> like you know, are you still doing interior designing? Yes, no, no, I have dropped it. I'm a hatha yoga teacher now. I used to refer to other partners who worked with me. Like you know, it's going like that. And so uh, when I was doing this interior designing, uh, and then uh, parallelly I had the opportunity of demo, you know, demonstrating with few hatha yoga teachers. Uh, back then there were no videos. Oh. So, uh, I, I I wanted to I know there was a, there was a huge need for demonstrators actually, so I used to uh, demonstrate for many hatha yoga teachers, and I'll be traveling a lot, exploring new new I know new new terrains and everything, and uh, it was explore it was a very adventurous way of life. I went to Madurai Minakshi I mean, temple, Madurai when we are having class we went to this temple. And I had Jigardanda there. What is Jigardanda? <laughs> Jigardanda is a South Indian uh, drink. Right? It's like, uh, as we all know, uh, uh, roast milk and faluda is quite faluda, famous. Yeah. You know? it, it is similar to faluda, but it won't be having lots of cherries in it. Okay. But it's quite, uh, quite an amazing recipe. Uh-huh. But you should try it when you are going to Madurai. <laughs> mm. Okay, there's another one checklist in yeah. <laughs> five seconds. Uh, list okay so it's a wonderful uh, thing so i had this opportunity of whenever i go to new terrains uh, i i i happen to see this uh, life in a different perspective the, this all happened because of the uh, opportunity of demonstrating and uh, i could literally see a change in physiological state and the psychological state of a inner person, just in three to four days of time after this thing. I was, I was just, uh, I, I won't even open my own mouth in the, while demonstrating. We don't have, we don't have the necessity to speak. So, the teacher will be taking the class, I'll demonstrate. But I, I can see the participants, like, you know, whenever I'm out of the uh, dais, I'll be seeing the participants. You know? and the first day and the fourth day, I can see there's a drastic change happening in there. So, I thought, okay, this is something which needs which is needed for the moment and it was uh, it was not something I, I didn't think it started dwelling inside me it's like you no know, it, it has been the need for the hour like that and all and uh, luckily there are few people <laughs> who found out even, even you, know, you know it happens with our close uh, friends and all right they will know what is best for us <laughs> and they will suggest like uh, I had a uh, few good friends who will suggest me like, you know, see, you are good in these things and you can go with that like that. And they insisted, like, go with the teacher training like that and all. And, and the journey started. And um, in 2017, the journey started. So, yeah. ever since then, I'm here <laughs> full time into teacher training. So, I'm more, I'm, during my childhood and all, I, I used to be like, you know, I'm not a... Um, like, I had this uh, flexibility, like, okay. you know, flexibility was inborn with me, like, and then uh, mm, I was into more into music, actually. Music. Not like music uh, practitioner, okay. but music listener. <laughs> so, uh, till now, this, that has, this has been with me. So, uh, whatever, there are many, you know, I, I'm, I don't know, unconsciously I'm doing research on it. <laughs> The evolution of the music, what is the intention of the music, all these things. You know, Sadhguru has spoken more about it. But this is something which has been, I've been observing it. Like right. unconsciously, this is getting collected. You know, when you are when you are interested in something, this data just like that comes into you, right? So like the the music thing has been always with me. So right now, which instrument you are learning? <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning flute now. Okay. Uh, sooner or later, we can. I guess I'll be putting some videos yeah. about flute actually. So flute has been one instrument which has been with me from my childhood. I don't know wherever I go, I'll get to flute. flute. But I haven't uh, made an effort to learn it properly. But I know something related to flute has been like, you know, it has been attracting me a lot. I don't know because of the breath or because of the, <laughs> you know, the gentle uh, uh, music it uh, gets on. So flute has been my uh, closest instrument. And veena, veena is like wonderfully, uh, 
something about the veena the they say the gamakam and all the things in it it's wonderful uh, that's another instrument that uh, if we not know in future <laughs> i will try it and see mm, so could you the, talk a little bit about the what happened what were supposed in the hatha yoga teacher training how was that experience different from the yoga you learned and yeah. what was actually uh, whenever we and we were uh, doing yoga during my childhood and all see the significance of the uh, posture was not thought thought was actually why it has to be uh, why I, why it has to be learnt in an order it was not thought to like a uh, thought was like you know we just get into a posture and you know we'll come out of it no not even few seconds will be that i'll just get into the posture and then i'll come out that was how it was then back then in, during my school days and college days and all but here in after the training when i'm going through the training holding the asana how much thing how much dimensions it can get us uh, into like you know how much dimension it can open all these things it was wonderful to see uh, many things i can't articulate just like that <laughs> in terms of perception uh, it has enhanced like anything like uh, uh, just looking at a person or just in few words about in getting in conversation we can know i i am able to guess okay this is the thing they are looking like that this perception was not there before <laughs> it's handy when it comes to like you no know, knowing uh, uh, the context of the conversation and to lead a proper conversation so that way this is one way and one thing that i am saying there are many things actually uh, uh, if something is uh, If something is not okay in your system you will easily notice it the sensibility of the system has been hyped up to such extent just in when few moments i know something is not good so i have to i'll take the necessary measures for it like that so those things happened after the training before that it was not like that it was more kind of uh, i was hatha like you know okay. i was adamant okay adamant that, that okay. means like you know i'll be getting into debates and you know the pleasure of having uh, win 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 situation right like no win situation all this thing that was that yoga was not happening and after the training i could see that uh, i became a more of an observer an observer and i was able to see what is need needed and give what is needed to the uh, uh, person around me and uh, i could see that and sensibly i can take things what is needed for the person to be specific uh, if a participant is asking i have to do surya kriya like or else i have to go do angamardana or something i can see that how what they are actually looking for maybe they might say that okay i am looking for uh, angamardana but their body might not so be suitable for mm-hmm. it i have to see what is the intention behind it i have i will go over it and then i can say see you since you are having this issues i wouldn't recommend angamardana for it but for, for, start with uh, another practices like maybe surya kriya strengthen your system and then we can go for anga mantra like that so like this you know getting people what they actually need instead of just like that going uh, about people uh, people's will so taking yoga in the appropriate <laughs> way and uh, which is the right yoga that they were looking for so that is one another thing that i noticed and all so this is in my during this is in my yoga aspect in terms of leading life like life as well like you know 80% of the time i'm happy okay. <laughs> that is worrying people <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i've seen people you know they come how come they are always smiling like that? what is wrong with you like that they have been commenting that i don't mind <laughs> um no, that is another aspect of life i'm seeing so <laughs> so and now from there how hmm. was your first class i don't know just asking was like yeah. from the tra- training to getting your first class mm. and also about the defense expo you were sharing <laughs> if you can share which you're sharing with me okay uh, try to okay. subtly put that okay. across yes mm. actually uh, after my uh, training uh, there was a request from hy satya yoga school to take few foundation classes uh, and i told i'll voluntarily take without any Uh, like no i'll just uh, do it as an offering to foundation so i started the journey with it so first class was a demonstration for surya kriya uh, second class was uh, bodu shuddhi so first i demonstrated and uh, the second session was my bodu shuddhi session okay so bodu shuddhi is the initiation you might have been knowing right yes. it's a, it was a, i started with the initiation so it was um, 
it was a very big thing for me <laughs> because demonstration before training as uh, also i was doing right. demonstration so initiation is the class that i i was taking of course there are you know, little i was little conscious of everything and all then after that okay this process has to get across right i was uh, i was very sure about it uh, it's beyond my uh, like you no know, it is beyond whatever is going in me uh, for them it is going to open up certain other like you know, th- there is a possibility so which uh, the inabilities of the inabilities of me should not stop it in any any sense so i was very keen on it that that stand came in me then the session went with a superb <laughs> Flow and you know, people and experienced it in a very wonderful way. And one experience I wanted to yes, share please. is uh, like um, uh, since you know it was not organized in a proper Sanadi hall or something. It was just a proper hall, like you no know, normal hall, where we went and we ourselves only we mopped and yeah. uh, we uh, cleared off plays and everything. And it was a closed space, so everything was done. I could literally see how how the place was. We did the do poem and all this thing. created the ambience like everything and after the initiation is over i know the initiation happens like a boom <laughs> so after the initiation uh, i was uh, walking I, i was in a call i i took a call and I spoke to the coordinator and everything went cl- well like that and, uh, and after that i was just like in the while speaking in the phone itself i was entering the hall uh, my my focus was on the uh, phone like you know, conversing with her just like that something hit me like you know something has changed in this hall like that you know it was like this not something uh, uh not in the mental state this is very physically i could see that something has changed in the hall there it's an empty space it's not no nothing consecrated materials are not there but i could see that just the ambience has changed <laughs> <laughs> then i thought oh my god <laughs> so even after uh, people participants have left and everything is uh, everything got winded up the ambience was so live then i thought oh my god this is what uh, we are offering then the responsibility you know became little high <laughs> and it was wonderful as well so defense expo is quite <laughs> okay so defense expo mm, i i i'm an, i did my aeronautical engineering <laughs> so well uh, I I had this uh, see the whole aspect of me getting into aeronautical engineering is I wanted to be a weapon specialist. <laughs> oh is it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I wanted to get into DRDO and I want to be a weapon specialist. Even in my college uh, times few not like everyone few friends of mine and few one of my lecturers used to call me as weapon specialist. <laughs> oh is it? <isn't? laughs> so mm, like you know I I'm more into this uh, this kinds of life. Of course it got influenced from the video games that I played in my Which earlier life. Video games. <laughs> oh you're into video Metal Gear and Metal so, Gear yeah. Yeah, yeah you know you know Metal, Metal Gear, Gear Solid and all. No? Yeah, yeah yeah Metal Gear Solid. Such a wonderful game and right. it is actually. So these game these days I don't know whether these kinds of games no, exist. It's PUBG and yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't I told you I'll tell you not even once I have played PUBG. Right, right. But uh, when I was 10 or 11 11 11 years, 11 years of age I played this Metal Gear song. Maybe you like PUBG. Maybe yeah. you try it. Okay. Or... <laughs> That is what I like. See, the thing is, PUBG is like, uh, more like, uh, just the defeat and all, okay. all this thing. But Metal Gear Solid is like, more about the actual politics happening in the uh, world. world. Not in one particular country. Right. In the whole world, actually. How this weaponization is taking over. Taking over. What is the need for weapons? The need for weapons, how it is taking over the okay. whole uh, world and everything. so many countries you know right. they they have this thing they they manufacture ma- weapons and they, they, they you know the stories right they they will be selling it to other countries all these things that uh, that game has profoundly explained all these things right. i'm telling it's like 20 years 20 back 20 years yeah <laughs> i was also a kid mm. so it influenced me like you know uh, about the uh, you know these days the sniper rifle and all they're using in the game mm. actually those who are using sniper rifle they they should they will take a tablet called diazon oh okay so for, for the hand should not shake shiver okay uh, shiver that was mentioned in that game 20 oh, years back right okay if you are using a, a sniper rifle so you should take diazon tablet in a periodic time right. or, or else your hand will shake right. so these things were very, like that much uh, technical it was the game was so the research <laughs> was going into that game yeah yeah so many things happened I don't know these days. I know uh, I don't know that much intricacies were discussed in the games. 
So of course, that is how I got into this weapon specialist and aeronautical uh, field. And uh, the fourth year of thing, as I told, the emotional uh, thing happened and everything. Back of mind, I was having this thing. Even though I uh, shifted from the course of what I look for, um, back of mind, I thought, okay, something. Maybe I should have taken a little more time and explored and I should have entered into Maybe uh, and later on like that, I should have explored like that. I was in back of mind, not in the front. Right. Back of mind, somewhere. That <laughs> it was there like that because, you know, relatives and... Uh, uh, family, they will influence you. You know, you studied well. You are one of the, uh, you are one of the good students, not the top student, not good student actually. And then um, you didn't go with the flow and all like that. They were commenting, and it was even though I will defend myself in the back of the mind, it was there a little. Yeah. And I went to this defense expo. Defense expo is uh, I don't know uh, <laughs> many uh, know about it. I don't know. So defense expo is where. Um, Oh, most of the countries display all their weapons and they showcase what are the capabilities. They will bring their best of best weapons and they will show. <laughs> Imagine Rambo in full flow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More than that, Anna. Okay. I, I, can, I, I, I don't know whether I am authorized to show those <laughs> yeah. pictures. Mm, best of best weapons they will be having. Sniper rifle means what are the best sniper rifles. Uh, rail guns, like all the other different varieties of guns will be there. And I was, you know, I was having the best day. <laughs> Right. <laughs> All the three days I was going and I was taking pose and I was just uh, there at the time they were allowing us to take guns and clock it and oh, okay. we can post. Oh, yeah, okay. all these things and all we can do. So all these things were I was doing, and then uh, and then our uh, HA like no our uh, particular de uh, weapons department uh, display was there. Uh, like, I went and I spoke to him and I was in my panchakajam and in my uniform attire. <laughs> I went there and I spoke to him and uh, I, we went little technical. Like, no, I, uh, he recognized, you know, oh, you're becoming technical. What is your background? Like, this was asking. I told him, I studied aeronautical engineering. And what are you doing now? He was asking. And I told, uh, I'm a hatha yoga teacher now. <laughs> like that. Without even a moment hesitation, he just like that, you know, he went to touch me feet like that. You know? I told Anna, please stop, what are you doing? Like that, I hold, you know, uh, held, uh, held his hand and took it up. He is like, um, in terms of experience in that field, if I had entered into HIL, it will be like more than 20 years, it will meet, it will take for me to get into the stage, what uh, he is he's now, he is there. And, um, you know, the, if I had, uh, that, that's the, that was the life that I would have been, like, I would have dreamt for because the pen specialist and he is in that field and, you know, I am seeing him and after that I, you know, what, you know, like that, you know, he, he uh, spoke to me and he said, the need for yoga is very much now, I, uh, I know how much uh, people, uh, how, many, how many people are going through this kind of stress and everything, they can't tell and even in army and even in, uh, Air Force and uh, in highest of the pro professions actually, like uh, many highest of the professions in police personnel and all, they can't just like that speak to normal people and tell like no, I am stressed out like yeah. because it is something uh, they can't showcase it out showcase it because out. it might harm their uh, yeah. job and you know it's like that. It's very much uh, it's there in their job description itself. So. Uh, for them, taking yoga is very important, and he realized it, and he told, "This is the actual need for the or like that." And uh, after that, I had <laughs> no tears in my eyes, and there was a different kind of stillness in me, which lasted for more than 30 minutes, I guess. Yeah. So I was not speaking even one word, and uh, everything that I was looking for was answered. <laughs> like you know, though, like you know, what I aspired and what I thought in my thought in my back of mind which was good and everything like you know, which might have been the best for me all these things you know shattered you know this is the actual need <laughs> it was addressed actually i don't know who addressed it like you know I, the universe or uh, sadhguru or like you no know, i don't know who made this uh, made this particular point realized to me and and i took a i, I don't say like a decision I took a course of life to take it, okay, this is what I am engineered for. <laughs> right. So then I decided, okay, not like I didn't decide, then I chose this to be my path to take the tools of transformation to across people, 
uh, and see the transformation within me. So this is one profound thing. <laughs> Not everyone has this opportunity to see the same within me and you know, take it to the people as an offering. Um, now I'm here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm doing it and taking it. Yes. So we went all logical. Now we can go a little bit into devotion <laughs> towards Sadhguru sure, Sanidhi sure. and uh, because many people have, have about Sanidhi. So now how you decided to bring Sanidhi home and uh, yes. how it has been? Mm, sure, Anna. See, actually, uh, Sanadi, uh, to I think most of you people will be knowing it. Sanadi is a consecrated uh, material, like uh, um, it's like uh, consecrating the space where you are living uh, through certain processes. So Sanadi is like um, it's a it's like you're bringing Sadhguru to home, or the presence of Sadhguru. That is how it's said. It's quite beyond logical <laughs> thing that I'm going to say. So what Sadhguru says is like uh, no human being should live, uh, so no should live in a non-consecrated, like no, uh, every human being should live in a consecrated place. That was his point, uh, he says. And I felt like you know, there has been little harmony, uh, no, non, there was no harmony in the family, like I'd see like you know, was, something was going up and down and uh, the sense of uh, energy was not balanced and I could see the emotions were playing to high and everything. Okay, something, even if I'm not there, something has a backup has to be there in the family, I thought. And um, and I know this is a wonderful space that I have here, so it, it can accommodate like five, four to five participants. Even for the participants to learn them, learn practices in a consecrated space is very important. Right. So, because it will have a different impact in their system. So, so I decided, okay, we'll go with Sandhati and we'll bring Sadhguru himself if he is here then uh, uh, in terms of taking uh, things will be easier <laughs> it's a great podcast <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful Anna. so yeah we have consecrated the podcast <laughs> so that is on uh, that was that was the whole agenda Anna. and after the after one important one important thing is that you know throughout my life i have been a more logical kind of person I thought uh, devotion is very much needed for me, so I thought, okay, so when I am having Sanadhi, the devotion part will be coming through because there are certain maintenance that we will be taking care of, so eventually I will end up being, uh, devo no, the devotion part will be taking care and devotion part is very important, mm, it's, a, it's an accelerated in, uh, what I have seen is like it's an accelerated for Can me. you tell for the audience what do you mean by devotion? Like. <laughs> <laughs> now we are getting into yeah. trouble, Anna. <laughs> okay. So, it's something we can't describe okay. in words actually, but I can say how it has been like, you know. For example, the, um, when you are having your loved ones, it, it, it can be either way, like uh, your partner or your children or something. Sometimes, even though they are logically not fitting to the reason or the conversation that you are having with them, you will have a different kind of a bonding with them, right? So, that bonding is devotion. You know, maybe it's of a, you can say it as a love or something. But uh, that is very limited for that uh, particular uh, circle, like a circle of people. But when you have, when you expand the love, like when you, are, when you are expanding uh, that particular aspect uh, beyond the boundaries like without any physical boundary like no there is there's no need to be in um, physical proximity with them or something uh, and, but the, the same way but you can uh, be in the same uh, love and you know uh, uh, the caring for them all these things means uh, then you are in devotion <laughs> Without any physical, uh, like, oh, any transaction, like no, nothing is there like that. Uh, no, uh, that has been. That's what I can. Uh, that is the closest that I can arrive. <laughs> uh, when when we are in this state and uh, getting things across, um, it had a different way of uh, balancing me, and the balance has been very. Uh, uh, very needed for me, like you know, it has been very needed for me. Or else I'll be too logical, like you know, I'll be like, okay, everything's in place and uh, everything, you know, everything should go well, like that. I'll be there. But uh, it won't happen that way. <laughs> then you know, anxiety will come. What? What? Why didn't you know? It didn't go like that, you know. 
but when i am devoted when i am this particular thing then i will be like okay what are is happening but i put my best to it then the acceptance of acceptance you know, that is coming inside me then the acceptance is keeping my system in a harmony that i am noticing it a lot so the acceptance uh, is very much needed i would say but it is just like that i can't uh, give a like you know <laughs> uh over you of how to accept just like that everyone how can i accept my enemy and all because it's a big thing <laughs> um but it opens up where you are not vulnerable of, vulnerable to all these things it started with this particular small path of expanding your boundary of <laughs> i think for that devotion has been very much useful anna so, i hope i answered your yes. question <laughs> no 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 more more can you talk about linga vairavi gudi and your incident with your dog <laughs> Okay. Bye, <laughs> okay, Anna. <laughs> Fine, okay. So, I have a native breed uh, called Chippi Parai in my home. So, his name is Bhairava. <laughs> so, uh, like, uh, no, when he was a puppy, of, like, you know, he was only six months or seven months old. Six months, actually, to be precise. Uh, no, I was keeping him in Chennai. and then uh, one day like you know there is a slum nearby actually so there were, there were a few boys who are noticing him like you know he is quite uh, he is a rare breed right? right so people are noticing him and this uh, this guy is teenage boys you know they were noticing it i even noticed it you know they are their way of looking at it is different like that and all. Mm, one day like you know uh, one day uh, they took him away it seems <laughs> so after that i went to the slum area and i searched like you know, it is quite a big area it's right. like uh, it's like more than 2.5 lakh people oh. live there so it's kind of like that kind of a place mm, so i went there i searched for him and you know i couldn't uh, find him i went again with my friends it was like i was here and there i was searching uh, it was crisscross uh, crisscross it was like more than 2 km span or something it was like that as going here and there here and there i couldn't find him <laughs> so after that four months went by four months went um mm, fine day i was doing my sadhana and i was doing uh, uh aarti to devi i i thought like you no know, devotion was coming down i was more like you know i was getting intellectual again so i thought okay, i need to get my into devotion back so i after my sadhana i will do aarti so i'll do my aarti and after that like you no know, uh even evening after my evening sadhana as well i'll do my aarti after that so in one fine day uh, just like that you know one of my friend uh, called me and said uh anna you didn't say that you know he is a meditator actually okay. anna you didn't say that you know bhairava uh, you know the bhairava bhairava has been lost like that you didn't say to me i know a few people who can help me and like that oh. oh is it so let's go on now uh, tomorrow we'll go and we'll search and like that i told the next day he didn't pick up the call oh, okay. <laughs> okay but then i told like i i saw myself like you know some some way there some intuition i don't know something some call has come so i'll go it's my responsibility to go and check after four months uh, before going i just did the aarti again to very way so just making an effort out of intuition so this might be an effort to look into myself i thought like that and uh, i just uh, went and you know <laughs> search for him within one hour like within one hour i got him back <laughs> oh like where he was just walking there or no no he was in uh, he was in another uh, the same i told you know that right. teenage boy who has right. he has taken it he was tied up uh, out, outside his okay. uh, uh, home so i went there and uh, there were like more than 15 to 20 people were there okay the moment i went there bhairava started uh, no jumping on me and they were the, uh, the mother of the uh, particular uh, teenager uh, she saw that you know she herself told okay the owner has come like that she said it and she went uh, right. she you know she, she smiled and she went and said and then i told that you know i'm taking like that and right. you know they didn't resist anything oh, okay. i just like that uh, right. took it and you know <laughs> it was a big thing <laughs> uh, there i found out that you know many things beyond logical things uh, because i uh, i used all the influences that i had <laughs> i influenced uh, i used most of my influences mm. i had a, a quite a good number of friends who can help with this they were telling that uh, you should not go and same way i will also not come to you 
because it's very risky to go there like you know it's quite a right. different place actually so it was like that and then uh, he was uh, the person that i you know i asked for help and all they were shocked how did you even after finding it how did you get him back they right. won't be leaving it like that right, <laughs> like, you know right. they were uh, having that kind of uh, comment on it i don't know nothing like just like that happened then i saw devotion really has a different way of connecting with you just that i have to be tuned with devotion then uh, it's been uh, i wouldn't say that i'm completely a devoted person now but i'm trying to inculcate that uh, particular aspect into my life even now i'm trying to trying to it's like a trying it's like i'm trying to get in tune <laughs> That is the thing. Beautiful, Anna. Thank you, Anna. Sir, thank you so much, Anna. Did we miss something? Is there something I missed to ask? <laughs> you asked lots of things, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Anna, so, before we leave you, where do you conduct programs uh, and what would be the best way to reach you? Could you mm, could share? Okay. So, in Kadalur, it's like, uh, Kadalur is like 45 minutes from Pondicherry. So, uh, I'm conducting, this is a place where we can conduct five people at a time. or else in pondicherry i am putting classes uh, actually by uh, october 10th or uh, from october first week i am trying to conduct a session there in pondicherry so um, like that you know i i'll choose a place and take classes in my residence i am taking class here most of the time i have been chennai taking classes there so my contact number i think by second i can give you what about instagram can they reach out to yes you yes yes instagram for sure they can reach out so i have I I I'm going to be full on available on Instagram. <laughs> uh, I got lots of uh, you know ideas from my friends and Vaisa Kanna as well. So it was a pleasure meeting Vaisa Kanna. <laughs> and we had a wonderful day today yes. and you know it was a blessing. <laughs> Actually I was supposed to come to Chidambaram early but Abhilashana slept off and he said rain. But uh, good good thing I came <laughs> today because he went to Mahadar mm, Babaji's temple, Mahadar Babaji's temple. Mm, Isha Vidya and then thillayam kaliyam and Kali yeah many wonderful things happen just in one day one isn't day, it yes <laughs> and ishavdeva was a very wonderful uh, that was a cherry on top of the cake exactly exactly <laughs> tomorrow we are going to conduct a program there in ishavdeva to recorrect their uh, practices actually it's going to be a correction session and i'm planning to teach few uh, balancing yogas actually like you know it's been like two years right so people are into mobile phones and all right. that so i have i have spoken to the principal so you know right i have right. spoken right? so tomorrow 12 o'clock we have session there <laughs> so it's going to be a free session but for our children like we have to uh, take it i thought like it, it's very needed for them to correct them and get it like that yes that's fine thank you so much anna thank, thank you anna my pleasure thank you namaskaram <laughs> namaskaram <laughs>